A few years ago, I felt like Christmas came and went too fast. I wanted to enjoy it longer. So I decided to put it into my Google Calendar when I would decorate the house and when I would put up the tree. And that plan worked for a little while until last year. And then I had that feeling again. Christmas came and went too fast. I wanted to enjoy it longer. So this year, I was that guy. Yep. Uh, my house was lit up for Christmas the day after Halloween. <laughs> now, I didn't go crazy. I didn't put everything up, but I just did a little bit to kind of help get me into the mood. Because Christmas is a lot of things. And it's also a mood. Do you want to listen to Christmas songs on the radio? Nah, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> I know, that's why we listen to Christmas music, to get ourselves into the mood. And I love to watch all the movies. I, at the holidays, I need to watch White Christmas, I need to watch Elf, I need to watch at least one version of A Christmas Carol, and of course, I need to watch Charlie Brown. In fact, I need to watch Charlie Brown at Halloween, I need to watch Charlie Brown at Thanksgiving, but especially, especially at Christmas. Why? Because it's riveting television or because it broke new grounds in animation? No, of course not. I have to watch it for the memories, for the nostalgia of how it makes me feel like a kid again. I'm sitting on orange and black shag carpet holding my Mego Spider-Man doll. I'm wearing Star Wars pajamas and I'm staring up at a felt Christmas stocking my grandmother made. My brother Jason and I, we are just too excited to fall asleep. We have those Christmas memories. Besides, what other secular cartoon contains those beautiful words from the book of Luke? that Linus says on the stage of the Christmas pageant. He talks about the birth of Christ, the star, the angels, and that's why we're all here today. A story that begins with the creator of the universe choosing a baby and then it ends with angels praising his name. It's such a great story. And there have been a few good movies Two, about Mary and Joseph, but my favorite one is the Nativity Story. But as a movie and as a story, it starts pretty boring, right? Did you ever notice that? The Christmas story doesn't start with a car chase. <laughs> Luke 2 says, in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria and all went to be registered, each to his own town. Just another ordinary day. In fact, there's not even any mention of God there in the story. Nothing feels like God is a part of that story. That feels like a very human story, like a human government doing what human governments do. If this story were on TV, you would not watch it. You would miss it. You would change the channel. Hey, what's on TV? Is it a car chase? Nope. Gunfight? Nope. Well, what is it then? It's a census. Great. Sign me up. God's story begins with a census. When you read the beginning of Luke chapter 2, does it feel like God is a part of the story? I mean, I wonder if even Mary and Joseph in this moment understand that this is the beginning of Christmas or if it just feels like another day. You know, whenever my life feels out of control or the world feels out of control, whether it's war or recession or my favorite sport team is losing, it's very easy for me to feel like God's not paying attention. Yeah? And we ask, well, where is God? How come God hasn't shown up? And in those moments, I don't think that he's absent from the story. I'm not sure that he hasn't shown up. And it's not this moment, but it's even all through Jesus' life. I think it's so amazing to think how many people missed 
this moment. Because Jesus comes to us in the mundane. Jesus is truly present in this day to day. Even now, right? Even now. Most of us are thinking, ugh, how much longer is this going to take? We have stuff to do. We have Christmas to do. But even now, I, isn't God in this moment? Well, the truth is, God was in the census. And you look at verse 4. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. What's happening? Everyone in the entire Roman Empire has to register for the census. This would happen roughly every five years. And right now, God is moving every person in the Roman Empire just to put Mary and Joseph in the right place at the right time. Why? Prophecy. Micah 5, 2 says, O Bethlehem, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth from me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from old and from ancient of days. The Old Testament said the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. And Mary and Joseph are about 80 miles away, and they're on foot. So God moves the chess pieces to put Mary and Joseph exactly where they need to be, right place, right time. Okay? All right. Time out. All right, time out. Where are you? At this point in your life, where are you? Are you wondering if God is in your story? If God is paying attention to the events in your life, are you praying, God, are you watching what's going on down here? Some things in our life might feel like a detour or an inconvenience. And we think, this really isn't the right time in my life for this. Something is going on at work. Something is going on in your family. Something is going on in your health. Trust me, God is in your story. Even if you can't see him, just like he is here with Mary and Joseph, he is moving the chess pieces with intention. Right place, right time, by design. God is not a bystander. He is not an observer. God acts. God is the God of intention. He acts in human history. He works through us. He works through those around us. And so God has something for Joseph to do, and so he moves him. And at great inconvenience, I might add, right? Because wouldn't Joseph say, God, would you look at Mary? I mean, this is the wrong time for a big trip. How, how could God do this? God, don't you know what we're going through? Mary is in her last trimester, and that's when they have to travel this great distance, and they're not flying first class. This is like a step below coach, or two steps below coach. God, I'm doing everything you want down here, right? I'm doing everything you ask, and this is how you treat me? Yep. Listen, God is more than willing to inconvenience you to get you where you need to be, the right place at the right time. But if we're too busy thinking about our comfort over our purpose, or about our safety or our security over his design, we may miss what he's doing. We could miss Christmas. God doesn't want you to miss Christmas. And he doesn't want you to miss what he's doing. So you should never be surprised when a flood comes. You should never be surprised when a census is called. God will do whatever he needs to do to draw you into the story. God will do whatever he needs to make sure that you don't miss his presence. Going on in Luke, it says that in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. 
God didn't want the shepherds to miss it either. Yeah, but shepherds? Shepherds are not who you would invite to the fulfillment of Micah's prophecy. This seems kind of more like a black tie event. Less shepherds. I mean, who would you invite? I mean, to be honest, probably Pharisees, right? You'd invite the Pharisees here. We should invite them. The guest list should include priests and government officials. It should include a few influencers. This is opening night. This is the night to invite royalty. Not this story. You see, maybe this is why people miss it, right? Maybe this is why we get confused sometimes, because God doesn't do the things that we expect him to do. Our God invites shepherds. <laughs> How many people does God overlook to invite shepherds? How many people didn't get invited to the party? I, I, mean, I wonder if the people who live next door to Jesus' birth knew what was going on. Because the Bible never says, and then the Thompsons popped over with the casserole, does it? Can you imagine reading the Bible years later and then realizing, hey, honey, remember all that time along, remember way back when? That, yeah, the Christ lived next door to us. Isn't that crazy? And you missed it. The story doesn't end the way you think. Nobody representing religion or power visit Mary and Joseph. God invites shepherds. Verse 17 says, And when the shepherds saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Those shepherds became the first witnesses. They became evangelists. God didn't invite prophets, but they became prophets. God didn't invite priests, but they became priests. And just like Mary and Joseph, God moves the pieces that are important to him, to get them where they need to be, at the right place, at the right time. And so, once again, in the Christmas story, we are reminded that it's okay if I don't always know what's going on. It's okay if my story doesn't go the exact way I think it should. I, I, can, I can learn to allow for a little disruption in my life now and again. I can make this long journey. I can follow this star. I can place my baby in this feeding trough. I can welcome those people that God invites into my life. I want you to meet the baby this Christmas. To have your life impacted the way God changed Mary, changed Joseph, changed those shepherds. I want you to have the best Christmas ever. And for that to happen, you need to have an encounter with God. You need to allow God to change your life. You want that? Then I would offer, just pay attention to what's going on around you. Notice what God is doing in your life. Observe what pieces he's moving just to get you where he needs you to be. And, and if you're new to all of this, the beautiful thing that we learn from the shepherds is sometimes I don't even have to be the right person. I don't have to be the person you think of and say, oh, no, it, it, it can't be that guy or it can't be that girl. She's wrong for this. <laughs> you know, in the, in the, in the, going back to the Charlie Brown Christmas special, Charlie Brown is disillusioned about how commercial Christmas is, how busy it is, how plastic it is. And mind you, this was made 70 years ago. <laughs> so even people 70 years ago were feeling the same things that, that you're feeling now. And Charlie Brown thought he could get that Christmas feeling, you know, get, get back in the mood of Christmas by directing the Christmas pageant or by getting a Christmas tree. And his frustration happens on that pageant stage 
where he looks up into the balcony and he says, what is Christmas all about? Because, see, he had tried everything. He was doing everything he was supposed to do. And he still felt lost. Until Linus steps in. And Linus tells him the story of the shepherds. A story about how God invites the uninvited. How they meet Jesus and how they run home with joy and worship. It says the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And who knows, maybe those shepherds, the songs that they sang, became the very first Christmas carols. Christmas is tomorrow. <laughs> Christmas is tomorrow. And then in a flash of wrapping paper and dirty dishes, it'll be over. The kids will rush off to their rooms with their noisy batteries and you'll put on a second pot of coffee and you'll wish, man, I wish it could have lasted just a little bit longer. It can. But not because you leave the lights up, but because you begin to learn to see God move in your story. You learn to see the bumps in the road, not as distractions, but as opportunities to see God's hand. You begin to feel his presence as your life changes and you observe the pieces moving and the events falling clean into place at the right place and the right time. See, I used to think those people that hung up Christmas decorations early were a little crazy. The department stores start decorating for Christmas before Halloween is even over. But I think now the reason why I want to get the lights up so early. It's not just to get me in the mood. It's to announce to the world that for me, the mood never left. Christmas may be back. Yes, the baby is born. And what a celebration we're going to have in 2024. But God never left us. Emmanuel, God with us. He's always been here in your life and mine. He's there in the exciting moments and he's there in the mundane. Even right now, in this moment, he is chasing away the gloom so that you can have the best Christmas ever. Don't miss it. Merry Christmas.